25 years ago there was a radiation accident at the Siberian Chemical Combine. The Siberian Chemical Combine was created in the early 1950s in the Tomsk region in the city of Siversk. Since 1961 operated a radiochemical plant, engaged in separation of plutonium from the irradiated uranium blocks and purification of uranium and plutonium from impurities. One of the stages of the work was to prepare the uranium blocks for plutonium separation. To do this, they were placed in the apparatus, which was a steel container, 6.3 m high and 2.8 m in diameter, set in a canyon and surrounded by a concrete wall more than a meter thick. On April 6, 1993, at 12.40 to 1300 hours p.m., one crew at the plant turned in a shift and another began work. At about 12.50 p.m., the operators reported to the engineer on duty that the pressure was rising in the unit. After checking, it turned out that it had risen to two atmospheres. The process engineer told to depressurize the adjacent apparatuses through the process lines, but this had no noticeable result. At 12.55, the pressure in the apparatus rose to five atmospheres and continued to rise. The wall thickness of the apparatus vessel was designed for 14 atmospheres. By 12.58, the pressure reached 18 to 20 atmospheres. Then the apparatus failed. There was an explosion. By this point the apparatus contained almost 9,000 kilograms of uranium and half a kilo of plutonium. When we arrived at the site, there was a shock, because the half building just wasn't there. It had collapsed vertically almost in half, one part had survived, and the other was lying right on the road. The roof was on fire and smoke was coming from the gates of the railroad entrance. We were instructed to go there, a large trash can was on fire recalled firefighter Oleg Vlasiuk. During the explosion a large part of the plutonium and other radioactive substances was released into the atmosphere through the destroyed walls and roof of the tank, the roof and windows of the workshop and the regular ventilation system. Immediately after the explosion, people in the workshop were alerted by sirens, put on lepistock respirators, and were escorted out of the building personnel not directly involved in the emergency response were evacuated. Firefighters extinguished the fire on the roof and in the control room in 10 minutes. The ceiling slabs of the canyon, where the apparatus was located, were displaced and the ceiling of the apparatus hall was destroyed. The paint on the walls was bubbling, which indicated that a vapor gas mixture had exploded. In addition, the wiring and electrical fixtures of appliances and lighting were destroyed, the heating system was damaged, and cinder blocks and window openings in several places in the equipment room were knocked out. The accident resulted in radioactive contamination of production facilities, neighboring industrial sites in the northeast, and the Sibriac Enterprises farmland. The radioactive plume stretched for 8 kilometers. A week later specialists from the International Atomic Energy Agency arrived at the site of the accident to assess the impact of the radiation release on public health and the environment. The work was done in cooperation with specialists from the Institute of Biophysics, Russia's state scientific center. One of the few benefits to be gained from the incident is the opportunity to find out as fully as possible what caused it and to disseminate this information. The consequences of the accident could be very extensive, so it is important to make sure that as much is known about the explosion and its aftermath as possible, the report noted. As the experts established, the pressure in the apparatus increased due to non-compliance with the modes of mixing solutions and blowing gases out of the apparatus. There was a chemical reaction between the organic content and nitric acid. In addition, there was a solvent in the apparatus with a high content of cyclic paraffins, which led to the accumulation of chemical compounds that reacted more actively with nitric acid. The temperature in the upper part of the apparatus was significantly higher than in the lower part an irreversible chemical reaction would have been impossible at temperatures below 70 degrees Celsius, as required by regulations. Saversk and Tomsk were saved from large-scale radioactive contamination by the weather, 
Vlasiuk believed. There was a wind from the river, snow, rain, it all came down in one fell swoop. If not, it probably would have covered the city. Chernobyl was still living in our minds at the time, that's why there was fear, he recalled. Indeed, at the moment of the explosion the southwest wind was blowing, and it was snowing. It captured some of the released radionuclides and forced them to settle in the vicinity of the plant. There were only two small settlements in the path of the fallout, neither of which required resettlement. By September, the intensity of the radiation had dropped to background levels. As a result of the accident, a total of 1,946 people were exposed to radiation, including 1,920 emergency workers. Ten people received an annual permissible exposure dose under normal conditions, 5 rem, but the limit of permissible single personnel exposure 25 rem was not exceeded. On the international nuclear events scale, the incident was assigned, according to various data, to level 3, a serious incident with negligible release and non-lethal effects, or level 4, an accident with local consequences, minimal release, and possible single fatalities. For comparison, the accident at the Mayak Production Association received a level 6, and the accident at the Chernobyl nuclear power plant received a level 7, the maximum. There was some damage to humans and the natural environment as a result of the accident, but it was the minimum that could have happened. Both the wind rose and the spectrum helped the explosion took place in the technological chain which had already passed the stage of deposition of cesium-137 radionuclide. But in general, the population that lives in the permanent zone of influence of the Siberian chemical combined received a significant dose load, but not because of the accident in 1993, but because of other incidents before that year. This accident contributed a small fraction, but it allowed to deal for the first time with the impact of the Siberian chemical combine on the environment and human health. If you were interested thank the author by giving me a nickname. And also don't forget to subscribe, so you won't miss even more interesting videos on my channel. Turn on notifications by clicking bell and share this clip with your friends. What else interesting you can add on this video? Write in the comments, it will be interesting to read.